Hey guys, what's up? Um, so I didn't get a video out last week. Um, I didn't quite have the time to. My weekend came and went and I was kind of busy doing stuff and didn't have time to get a video out. I apologize for that. Um, but I'm making a video this week and it's just kind of a story time video. I don't have anything really prepared. I didn't go on any big trips um, the last couple of weeks, mostly because of the last video I made went to Tokyo, blew a bit of my budget out. Um, so just kind of taking it easy until I get paid again. Um, but I'm out here at this park, kind of close to my house. Um, just kind of enjoying nature and feeling kind of like I needed to be outside because spring's in the air, spring is here, and I haven't had a chance to get out and explore too much um, or experience too much of the outdoors. So I'm just out here today deciding to film to do my normal inside thing. But what I want to talk about today, which is just a little bit different from normal, is one of these stories my students talked to me about. Um, being a Nova teacher, having to talk to a lot of students, not having my like, you know, kids mask on when I was in ALT in Guma Ken, Guma Prefecture, teaching elementary school students. You know, it's a lot more professional conversation that we do, a lot more like kind of intimate conversations about our students' lives and this kind of thing. Um, and so I don't want to divulge anything about this student personally, but I want to just talk about one of the stories he shared with me. Um, and that is that he's a very old man. He might maybe 86, pushing 90 years old. He's very, very spry, very outgoing, does a lot of exercise. He practices his English basically every week or every other week. He comes in two hours at a time just to practice and rehearse and to do this kind of thing. Just to keep his brain going and, and to keep himself sharp and this kind of thing. And he usually just tells me about his hobbies. He likes exercising, he likes swimming, he likes hiking the same mountain like every single day. Um, this kind of thing. You know, but he came in the other day with a bit of a story about his children and that got me asking about his past when he was a child. Um, he shared some information with me that I hadn't known previously even though I've worked with him for, you know, probably the last four or five months through his English. And so this was all in English. He couldn't describe it to me in Japanese because it was English class. But I kind of want to just retell the story to you guys. So, sorry for all that. Um, so this guy, he, he was born in Japan around the time that World War II was going on. And so he was telling me that at 11 years old, the war in Japan finally came to an end. And so he was giving me some of his experiences about what it was like to live in Japan back then. And he said at that time, his parents, they owned a shop in Kobe here. Um, and during that time, the war was getting ready to come down, was ready to wind down. He told me that he remembers, you know, for you know, the course of several months during the fire raids on Japan. Maybe that was only a day or so, but in the, the time building up to the fire raids on Kobe during 1945, I think was the year. Um, he remembers going underground, hiding under the earth in some of his family's bunkers and hiding out from the fire attacks and the bombs. And anytime an air sign would go off, he'd hide under there. And he remembers being afraid and being freaked out and being worried. Um, and in particular, he remembers how terrifying it was when his parents' shop was destroyed, when, you know, everything that the government had been telling them about them winning the war was going the wrong way, his parents being afraid, them having lost everything, um, and just how scary a time that must have been. And when I asked him questions, what was it like, what do you remember, he says he couldn't remember too much. He was only 11 years old at the time, but the thing he remembers the most is being hungry. Just being hungry all the time for that year, you know, leading up to the war and then the two years following the war. And when I asked him, what did you think about, you know, Americans when they finally came in and they occupied the island of Japan? He said, at first, we thought that they were going to be evil. That's what they told us over and over again. Was, They're going to be evil. These are going to be evil people coming to the island, taking what's yours, taking what belongs to Japan. And he says it turned out that the Americans that he met at least were really friendly. And he remembers going up to them and learning his first English word, or first English phrase, which was, give me gum please. And then, you know, receiving gum from the American soldiers and thinking that they're not so bad. He was 11 years old, so his mind shifted really quickly. And he remembers having a pretty positive image of Japan, but he said that Kobe was destroyed. It was on fire, it was ruined, the city was completely gone. And since that time, he's never left the city. So he's traveled around and that kind of thing, but he's grown up in Kobe his whole life. So he saw it as it was before it was destroyed. He saw it in the aftermath of the fire bombing. And then he saw it again as it was built up and his parents' shop was rebuilt and he eventually took over the shop and became the, um, the head of the shop and he still is now, even as an old man. But the guy's kind of like this national treasure. You know, how many people do you meet that are alive from World War II, much less survived on the Japanese side um, and this kind of thing. And I asked him a question about Hiroshima too because the bomb is, is such a big part of it, the, the atomic bomb, such a big part of the war and it's so kind of iconic of that time. 
Um, and he said as an 11 year old, he remembers hearing about it, remembers everyone talking about it, but he says he couldn't care less. As an 11 year old, it didn't bother him. It didn't, Hiroshima was far away as far as he was concerned. It's kind of far away, you know, two hours, an hour and a half on the bullet train or something like that from Kobe. So to him, it was like a different world. Kobe was destroyed and that was his immediate environment. But you know, for the for Hiroshima, for Nagasaki, the cities that were truly devastated like that, he you know didn't really have too much to worry about. And he said, as a youth, he remembers fondly you know going to school, playing baseball, meeting his friends. That's kind of what he was concerned about, hungry, but that's what he was concerned about. And so it's just really weird. And then for any of you that like Japan or like animation or like Japanese stories or anything like that, you know if you've watched the the Ghibli movie. Grave of the Fireflies, it documents this place. It documents, not this park in particular, but it documents Kobe, you know, particularly around the time of the fire bombings of Japan. Um, and you can kind of get a sense through this man's story and then also the story told in Grave of the Fireflies because it's semi, semi autobiographical, I guess is the word. It's, it's based on somebody's life and, and what they went through, but again, it's animated and it's kind of told in a different way. Um, you kind of get a sense of what it was like having lived in that time. And now me here living in Kobe now, I see everything that's been built up and put in the place. And as an American, I carry, you know, a bit of, not necessarily regret or anything because it was far removed from my time. But there's a part of me that feels that history, part of me that feels that relationship from the war. You know, it makes you remember that even though a lot of us weren't around when the war was going on, born after the war, it's still very recent history. It happened in this man's life. Um, so it was, it was something that I thought was really shocking. It's the kind of thing that's going to become less and less as these people get older. Um, it's something I wanted to share with you guys uh, just while I was kind of thinking about it because it happened the other day. Um, so guys, I want to just say like thanks a lot for tuning in. Thanks a lot for watching this video. Let me know if you've seen Grave of the Fireflies or maybe Barefoot again, if you guys know what I'm talking about. It's another animated movie about the bombing in Hiroshima. Um, if you guys have been in Japan and visited Hiroshima or visited Kobe or if anything like that, um, just let me guys know what you guys are thinking down in the comment section down below. Guys, please like the video, subscribe. Um, and if you like this kind of story time about my students or about people I've met here in Japan, let me know. Um, I'll get back to you in another video real soon. And if I looked at the screen the whole time and not you guys, I'm sorry. I was like, I don't know, thinking and talking at the same time. So if I was looking all over the place, I'm sorry. Anyway, guys, thanks a lot for tuning in. I'll catch you in the next video. See you soon and peace out from this little park in Japan. Later, guys.